It is, this speaker session is what girls need to know about leadership. It is my pleasure to introduce your presenter, Ms. Courtney Portluck. Courtney is the head of the upper school here at Stewart Country Day School and is the director of the National Center for Girls Leadership at Stewart. Please help me welcome to the stage, Courtney Portluck. Okay. Thanks so much, Barbara. I really appreciate it. So to start off, um, I would like to have some volunteers. So I need to have about seven to one, two. Yep, come on up. So there's two. I need some more volunteers. <laughs> I see. Yeah, come up. Just stand right up here. All right. Yep, come on up. Great. So we have four. Um, let's have two more or three more. Three more volunteers. Thank you. Two more volunteers. Okay, come on up. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So, I want you to just form a little circle up here. And here's what you need to do. You need to, I'm gonna give it to you. So you need to remember something. You rem need to remember who threw you the ball and who you've thrown the ball to. Does this make sense? Yes. So who threw you the ball and who you threw the ball to, all right? So however it happens organically, just remember, and then when it gets back to you, we're gonna pause for a second. Questions? Correct. All right. Ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Does everyone remember who they threw the ball to, who they received the ball from? Yes. Do you want to do it one more time just to? Okay. Why don't you do it again? Great. All right, now do it a couple more times. We'll just watch them. <laughs> and while they're doing that, I'm going to add another ball in the mix. I just added another ball to the mix. <laughs> you can run up and get it, yeah. Just another 30 seconds, we'll, we'll have you keep going. And you can talk about it, you can strategize, you can.
Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> All right, I want you to stand up here for a little bit. <laughs> what did you notice? What, what happened? And if you need the mic. Well, at first when there was only one ball, it was really easy, so like communication wasn't really that necessary, but as more balls started coming together, and especially when we saw the problem of like um, them hitting each other in the air, it was important to have partners and to like say names out loud and give eye contact. Kind of just add on to that, it was like really important to know what everyone else was doing in the circle because if you didn't, then the balls would hit in the middle or you wouldn't throw it at the right time um, or the person who you were throwing it to would still have a ball in their hands. So just like knowing what everyone else was doing was super helpful. I think for me, the most important thing was knowing that the person that I was giving my ball to was ready for it um, and she was my first priority. And so what does this remind you of? What was this exercise a metaphor for? Anyone? Sit, sit. A team. Communication and problem solving. The audience can chime in as well. What did this remind you of? Oh, I'm sorry? Collaboration. What else? How to work in a matrix? Yes. Trial and error? How to deal with stress? How to multitask? What else? Laughter. Have fun and laugh? What else? Support each other and work on each other and grow in priorities and keeping up with other people. Yeah, absolutely. Support each other. Patience also. Notice everyone waited. So there's patience there. What else? Be aware of your surroundings. I heard something from the audience. Working as a team in collaboration. Absolutely. Can we give them another round of applause? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, so working as a team, collaboration, you know, having so many things going on, right? We all have a lot of balls in the air, right? But if someone isn't ready to receive it, or someone isn't aware, or there isn't communication, or talking, or um, there isn't this sense of I'm ready, then it doesn't quite work the way we want it to. So then what? So then what do we do? So then we have to think about how do I you know, make sure that I'm patient, make sure that I am able to receive whatever it is I'm supposed to receive to then achieve my goals. And so, you know, what does every girl need to know about leadership? Well, I really like to think of this term as what does every girl need to know about how to lead her ship, okay? So what does every girl need to know about how to lead her ship? How does she guide herself? Leadership starts from within. Leadership starts from within. So before we talk about you know, being at the top of that company or before we talk about being the captain of that team or the head of you know, the debate club, we have to talk about leadership in terms of within. So what does it take for a girl to lead her ship? Okay? So first, let's talk about lead. Number one, love. It's the first thing. You need love. You need love for yourself, love for others, love for your surroundings, for nature. There needs to be an intense respect and love there, right? What do I mean? Not just, well, yeah, I, I, I do love myself. Not in just in saying it, but in showing it. How do you show love, okay? So just think about that. How is it that you show yourself that you love yourself? Okay. Is it, how, and also that goes for your thoughts, right? What do you tell yourself about yourself? Right? How do you love yourself? The second, empathy. We need to be able 
to think about, well, what must it be like to have that feeling that someone else is having? Okay, so empathy. You often hear of this maybe as um, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. But really, too, it's tapping into a similar emotion that someone is having at that time. So even if you're currently not having that emotion, can you meet that emotion? Can you think of a time when you have had that emotion? So whether it's joy, whether it's sadness, um, whether it's frustration, you can meet someone where they are by tapping into the emotional response and developing that empathy, right? So understanding someone else. Ambiguity. You need to be really comfortable with ambiguity. Unknown, unclear, not sure, and not really necessarily worrying about what's next, but really getting into a space of being present, of thinking about, well, what about now? What about now? Right? Because we do a lot of thinking about the future and about tomorrow. And that's unclear. So we can be comfortable in that space and then really think about what about now, right? What about now? So being comfortable with ambiguity, not really being sure or knowing what's next is critical, is critical. Decisions. We make them all the time. So we're always choosing when we say, oh, we're not going to do anything about that, we're making a decision, right? When we actively do something about, you know, whatever it is, we're making a decision. We're making decisions all the time, and so we need to recognize that we are making those decisions. So, oh, you know, if I just tell this little story about this person over here, eh, it's not going to be a big deal. It's like, no, we're making a decision. We're making a decision to say something about someone that we heard that might not be true or that might be mean-spirited, we're making a decision there, okay? When someone is hurting and we're, you know, not sticking up for them or we're not saying the right thing, we're making a decision when we don't stand up, okay? So we're constantly making decisions and our girls need to know that that's happening regularly. You're making decisions. Even when you say, oh, I'm not gonna do anything about it, that was a decision. So you, you said to my producers when they were coming here, I thought that was really great advice, and I took it too, that when you get to arrive in India, learn to move with the flow. You have to. Yes. Because there's another aspect of it which says in the movement towards enlightenment, and yes. we can talk about that later, but in the movement towards enlightenment, where you are is the point of arrival. So. You know, in America, for example, we're okay, always think, there. yeah. Okay. Because in in the way we are educated in the West, there's yeah. always some point of arrival. Yes. Right. Yes. So everybody is looking for the future, future. and they're never in the present. Mm -hmm. So when they arrive at the future, it's not there for them because now that they're not present for it. So Got if it. you get the idea that this is the moment that you have, it's the only moment that you have then you live in the present and you move with the flow because oh, yeah. this is the point of arrival right now. All right. So this, this being the point of arrival. So her. What about her? So leading her ship. So we're leading love, empathy, ambiguity, decisions. And we need hope. Hope. Hope that we're able to have everything we need in this present moment. We, we've been given everything we need right now, right? To make those decisions, to think about the future, right? To plan 
to help someone else, to love someone. But we need hope. And hope takes courage. It takes courage to have hope. It takes a lot of courage. Brene Brown has done a lot of work around vulnerability and courage and blame and shame. And oftentimes our hope and how hopeful we are is determined by how we deal with fear and how we face our fears, okay? And so thinking about her, we first have to have that hope. But that takes energy. <laughs> it takes energy. And when I talk about energy, I'm talking about um, the space in between us, that type of energy. I'm talking about what type of energy do you bring to an environment? Do you know your own energy? Have you ever heard someone say like, that's negative energy or that's positive energy? What's your energy? Do you know it? And do you know the impact and the power of your energy and how it can influence an environment and a space? It's really important for our girls to know that. What's your energy? And to know the power of your energy, it's critical. Resources, hope, energy, resources. Each other as resources, nature as a resource. Again, mentors, family. What are our resources? What is it that we use that helps us have hope? What is it that we use that inspires us? So thinking about our resources and how we're able to access those resources so that we can have the energy to develop the hope that we need in order to move forward, okay? So that way, we can get on that path to hopefully finding what it is our purpose is. How do we find that? So what I'd like for everyone to do is to come up on stage, every single person. Now, you're not gonna perform, you're not gonna do the ball activity, don't worry, right? What I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to come over to this table and I'd like for you to pick the picture that speaks to you the most, or at least the most right now. Um, oftentimes, pictures choose us. So whatever picture you land on or that you see, I'd just like for you to pick it up and take it back to your seat. And if you're sitting just in a kind of a singular setting right now, if you can find a partner. Okay, so come on up and pick a picture. Some over there as well. Find a partner once you've gotten your picture. And if it's someone you don't know, that would be great. So if you can find, hi. <laughs> Thanks. Find a partner.
So once you have your picture and you have your partner, I want you to look at your picture, tell your partner why you chose it or why it chose you. You have to figure it out. Why did you choose this picture? What does it say about you, about an experience? Why did you choose it? Good. We behaved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, we're, now we like chatting. We, we got you. <laughs> I'm going to go back to this picture. <laughs> Hi. Yes, I chose you. <laughs> It shows you. That's nice. All right. Do we have any brave folks that would like to share their picture? Why they chose it? Why it chose them? What it means to them? You would? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this, but I chose a map. Um, and I chose it because I consider myself an avid reader, and I read a lot of fantasy novels, and the first few pages before you start the book is usually a black and white map, but it's usually focused on continents, and I thought this was very interesting because the most important part, or the biggest part of this picture is empty, so I just thought that was interesting because I've never seen something like it before. Thanks, and how do you think that relates to you at all? Like, what, what about it speaks to you? I think it speaks directly to my passion just because it's caught my eye based on something I know. But I think it also holds a mystery because there's so much that I don't know in this picture. And it's something that I could take time to reflect on or if it were in the beginning of a book, I'd probably figure out its meaning. But I think it's something that I, it's based on something I know and also holds so much I don't, so. Nice, thank you. Can we give her a hand for? Do we have any other volunteers? Your picture? Yes. So I picked this. It's uh, kind of like a village scene where I, a shopping mall, actually, maybe. Not the mall, but it reminds me of India, where we take a lot of our family vacations because my husband is Indian. And uh, I thought of this because, uh, you know, we just had spring break, and all my kids had different different spring breaks, um, so we didn't do, you know, we, my husband went off with one, I went off with another, then I came back and went off with the third one, and the fourth one didn't get a spring break, so this is, this is becoming like, it's harder and harder to get everybody together, 
I'm like, oh, I missed that this year. It's not easy to do, so thank you. Anyone else want to share? Yes. So I had a hard time picking one. <laughs> uh, but I picked this uh, picture. It's a mother, and she is smiling and uh, holding the baby. And she's in the computer, and she's ergonomically not very correct with the phone and typing and with a pen and with binder. And this is kind of what we tend to do. Super mom, hard worker, everything got to come out perfect. Everything got to come out good. And uh, you know, we're lucky that trying to do all of that and juggle all of that every day. And we have amazing kids. And so this is our life. else want to share? Here? Okay. All right. Here and then here. All right. Thank you. So I have a, a picture of a parent and a child dragging a Christmas tree on a toboggan. And it shows me because it reminded me of my own childhood when me and my uh, seven siblings and parents would go out and select a tree. Um, and I was able to do that with my two older children before the advent of the artificial tree. Um, but my bride wants us to bring back the uh, tree, and it's just a, such a happy time. Kids are off from school. Um, we do all sorts of things together, and I have to work on getting rid of the cell phones at that time. But it's, uh, that's why I chose this. So mine is of a man kayaking, and he's about to probably go down pretty hard. Um, he's quite vertical. Um, and I recently just uh, led a trip for our school to Utah where we went backpacking and rafting for 10 days. And it was really the first time I'd had been introduced to nature in that way and you know, slept in a tent for eight nights and had to carry all my food on my back and have a really intimate relationship with nature. Um, and this kind of reminded me of that, and I haven't even tried to go back to that type of experience since being back from Utah. And so I would like to kind of reconnect and bring that a part of my um, every day. Um, and the other piece, we've been talking a lot about being present today. Um, and I don't think you could be thinking of anything else but the moment, <laughs> this moment in time. So coming back to that being present idea. Thank you so much. Um, you can just set your cards down on your, your seat. We'll, I'll collect them at the end. Um, but this idea of yourself and knowing why maybe something chose you, why you chose it, is this ship, this vessel, our bodies, right? So in leading, leading ourselves and lead her ship, what is, this, what is this ship? How is it that we first really lead ourselves? And self-awareness. So in the story shared, there was a self-awareness there in order to be able to connect with, how does this picture connect with me? Um, how much do I know about myself? How much do I not know about myself and recognize that there's so much more for me to learn? This self-awareness piece is really critical, um, just aware of space and time and, and how I fit in it, um, but also my experiences. How have my experiences shaped who I am, where I am, and how I am, okay? So again, the, the present, that we ended with the, the present, um, is how self-aware are we, at least now? Humor, really important, demonstrated in the activity um, with, you know, tossing the balls. There was laughter. Um, we have to have a lighthearted um, approach to some of these things and realize that um, laughing about it, our humor, our sense of uh, ourself, but also just knowing that 
we can keep some levity to situations uh, and make sure that we can really connect with folks. Sometimes laughter really is the best medicine. Sometimes. Integrity. So again, leading her ship, a vessel. What does integrity mean? What do we mean when we say integrity? What does it mean to you? Like what comes to mind for you? Anyone, I'm sorry, good character? character. Good character. Honesty? Trust? Trust. Values? Doing the right thing, not the easy thing. Strength. What else? Courage. Yes. Being true to yourself. Being true to yourself. And we're going to hear a little bit about that in a clip um, coming up. Being true to yourself. And again, trusting yourself, being true to yourself first. We have to do that first before we can even begin to engage and interact and build relationships in doing that. P, purpose. So lead her ship, our purpose. Why are we here? What are we supposed to do? And how do we know? You can tell I like Oprah. <laughs> a person has to try. A person has to put their energy into their own life and their own effort. You, you have to do that. Yeah. We have an intuitive voice in us. We, have a, we are born intuitive. We are, we are so intuitive that it's actually, for most people, the source of their greatest suffering, right? That inner guidance tells us um, I'm just going to let you, I don't even know what you mean by that. How is your intuition, your intuitiveness, the, the, the cause of your greatest suffering? I think it would be the opposite. Oh, no. No? No, it isn't, Oprah. It's actually the source of people's greatest suffering. Why? Because um, people hear when they've betrayed themselves. People are very much aware when they are not honest with themselves. Okay. People, it's that voice that says, you shouldn't have said that. You know that's not right. Or... You're still with this person, and you, you know you right. should have left 20 totally. years ago. Yeah. This is the voice of your conscience. It's the voice of your consciousness. It's the voice of your gut instinct. Okay, okay, it's okay. the voice. It's the voice you don't want to hear, that never turns off. Okay. And when you follow this voice and you push, this is the part that says you should push and you should do this. Um, so it's the part that keeps us moving and turning the wheel of our life. It's also the part that says, you've done as much as you could now. This is it. You've done everything you can. So it's the part that will say, that's as far as you can go. Yeah. It will guide you. It will say, this is it. So what you're saying is, is exactly what I've always believed and how I've operated. The being able to accept lives with, within the range of doing all that you can do. That's and right. when you have done everything that's right. that you can do that's you right. surrender it that's it let it go that's right to the power and energy that's greater than yourself that's it that's what you do that's right you got to give it your all give it your all give it your all give it your best and this inner voice and then not be attached to the outcome. totally you got it that's it I want you to turn and talk to someone next to you just about that clip. What did you think about it? What did it mean to you?
Maybe you can share that with the group. All right, folks, I know that um, folks are talking. I don't want to cut off conversation, but I would love to bring it back. And if there are any volunteers that just want to share a few minutes of their thoughts on this idea, I would love to, I would love to hear, hear from you. Yeah? Okay. I was stating that this clip was the most difficult for me um, because in terms of my own life, thinking about how you give it your all, as is stated, but at some point you have to realize you have to let it go. And that's certainly been a reoccurring theme within my own life. And sometimes it's not just letting go, but steering in a different direction. Um, so uh, those of us who are, um, you know, feel we have all the answers sometimes, that, that's a very difficult thing to deal with. Thank you for sharing. Someone else? Thoughts, comments? Something that you talked about in your small groups? Yeah. Um, so Julie and I talked about how um, the difference between how your gut can sort of play like this very critical role on you and sometimes it's hard um, to like hear that harsh opinion or that critical opinion sometimes because other times you want encouragement and how you don't feel like you can receive that sometimes. Um, how So you have to depend on other people to sort of provide that for you instead. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> So something that I was just thinking about um, just now after hearing Kristen talk was that um, something that my mom always says to me is that you are your own worst critic. And so I think it's really important when going through a challenge or doing something that you love and not giving it your all but not, not having everything come back to you in the way that you want it, it's really important to realize that once you give it your best, you can say, there's no, there's nothing else, like this is what we were talking about, there's nothing else that you can do, um, there's no more that you can do, and there's no regrets that you should have because you gave your best at the moment that was necessary, so. Just to add on to that point, <laughs> um, it's like once you say that you give your all to something, you can't dwell on it, and like, it's, it's like for me at least having satisfaction to say I gave this my all even if I don't get the position or if I don't make the sports team. Um, and like that just what, that's just what means so much to me because yes, getting the position is great or being starting on varsity is amazing, but just like knowing that you gave it your best shot and you did everything in your power, everything that you could control and you stayed positive throughout the whole thing and just like doing everything that in your power to change the outcome and to make the outcome what you want, even if it doesn't go the way that you want it to, it's still like amazing, an amazing experience that you put yourself out there for it. And um, if you fail from it, you like reflect, and I reflect a lot, um, and you say, did I give it my all? And if you can say yes to that, then there's no regrets to be had. Yeah. I just have, um, one more thing to add on to what Calabria was saying, but I think it's also just looking at the glass half full and not half empty. Nice. Yeah, this idea of like failing forward, right? And so, um, you know, hearing a no or hearing that you didn't get that thing that you really wanted to get or that you thought you might get um, is so critical. But then also recognizing that all of these components of how you can get there, right? How can you get to this place of that level of understanding? How can you um, help yourself with that, finding your purpose and understanding that, you know what, I gave it my all and now I'm going to let go. And not again be attached to the outcome because I know that where I am right now is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Where I am right now is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I am going to 
close there. I'm gonna leave this up though in case um, folks wanna look at it again. And I just wanna thank you for being an amazing participatory audience. So thank you so much. Any questions before we break? We have like two minutes maybe, but any questions, comments? Cards that you want to pass to me? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, question. Thank you. Thank you. Am I career path? Yeah. So the question is, what is the greatest challenge that I've had to overcome in my career path? Um, so there's a couple of things that, um, Thank you. There are a couple of things I can think of in terms of, thank you, the greatest challenge. Um, one of them was just what we saw up there is just not having the outcome of a decision affect my value and my worth, right? So whether that's a grade, right? Whether that's a you know, decision, a college decision of, of a no, whether it's a job that I didn't get, um, not having that affect my value. So knowing that, you know what, I didn't get that and that's okay. Um, I wasn't meant to get it. So now let's, let me move forward and understand what it is I am supposed to do rather than dwell on the fact that it didn't happen. I'm not saying not to reflect on you know, what are some things that I could have done differently or I might do in the future, but then to move forward and say, I am worthy, I'm valuable, I have gifts, I have talents, and they are going to be used in a way that is going to benefit others. And just having that mantra, that I was put on this earth to do something to benefit someone else. Right? So looking at it from an out, outlook and a standpoint of service. I'm here to be in service to others, to be a blessing to others, um, to hopefully change someone's life for the better. And how I do that and how doors either open or close for me and to get there is how it's going to happen. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your conference. Thanks. Thank you. And you can just pass the cards to me if uh, you still have them. Thank you. Oh, that thanks, was really Marvin. good. Thank I really you. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Here's your card. Here's your in the box. Oh, thanks. Beautifully done. Thank you. Someone knows the other side. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> 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 right. <laughs>